So I'm John Allen. Uh, this is ChatGPT. Can it be your assistant? Please be advised that this is being recorded, so you can turn your video off if uh, you don't want yourself to be seen in the future on our archives. So uh, this is what we're going to do. Going to introduce a little bit of just a small introduction of ChatGPT. Going to talk a lot about prompt prompting with ChatGPT. Um, then I'm going to go into some apps and extensions for ChatGPT that will help you with all sorts of things in your uh, daily routine. And then you can have you can take uh, raise questions. If you have questions about the sort of the the, the bits and bobs, you can you can do that, like the practical things. But uh, anything ethical, uh, please. Um, I I'm not here to discuss that today. We can have another one like that. Uh, I'd like to team up with somebody possibly in the future on that, but uh, not today. Okay, so do you have the time to learn new methods uh, to, to make your, to efficiently create learning materials for your students? Uh, in essence, make ChatGP your personal assistant. Um, since the craze happened, it started in late November and got a lot of momentum up by February. Uh, all sorts of things have happened. And just everywhere you look, it's a cra it's on it's on TV, it's all over YouTube, it's everywhere. So, so what is it? It's Chat Generative Free Train Transformer. Um, the the website. This is the website at OpenAI. Uh, it's an artificial intelligence based chatbot that was launched in November 2022. It's capable of uh, generating human-like responses to your input, human input. It's really a gigantic database. They call it the GPT language model, developed by uh, a company called OpenAI. It works by, ChatGPT works by analyzing the input it receives from the users and generates a response based on its understanding of the context and the meaning of the input. Okay, so basically you, you're going to type, it's going to respond, and you're just going to have a dialogue with it. Think about it. Think about this as like having um, the smartest friend in the world, and you have a, a dialogue back and forth until you can get something you can use or something professional or something personal like a workout routine or, or a recipe. So how to start, you would go to the, and you're not going to do this now, right? You're going to go to chat.openai.com. You're going to sign up. I'm sure after the pandemic, we all know how to sign up for apps and for resources. And then you're going to accept the terms of use. And then right away, you start prompting away. So what do I mean by a prompt? A prompt is just like a statement or a question or, or a prompt. And uh, like here, for example, I've written... Write a paragraph about the benefits of eating eels. And ChatGPT considers this and it builds a response. Nothing special here. So it's just a back and forth dialogue. For this session, I have taken a, I've condensed a kind of whole workshop from before and I've put them um, on this document here. Uh, I sent this email out about three or four hours ago, and it's about ba the basics of prompting for uh, GPT. We're going to go through uh, this document uh, fairly quickly, but you do have a copy. Accompanying this uh, handout are videos. I didn't know where to put them, so I put them under YouTube under my name, and um, you can see there's a whole bunch of them and it's growing and growing. So these are little snippets of me making prompts. But I gotta tell you, after you know, after just a little bit, you're you're gonna look at them and say, Yeah, I can do this. I don't need these. Okay, but maybe the first couple, it, they might be useful. So those are those are available to you. And that's where you get the videos. And uh, let's start on this document here, the prompting. Okay, so you can follow through here or you can just listen to me. But you do have that resource available to you. So the prompt structure can be just a question, request, or statement. And then you press the arrow key and 
and then uh, ChatGPT thinks about it and comes up with a response of some sort. You can also use parentheses to put uh, uh, attach um, attributes to your request or question, and you just put them in. And for example, one might be a format as a table or Cepher uh, B2. So that would give it more context for the structure. So you just type in question. So for example, I could put, uh, right, a poem, there's a story about an eel in Canada. And I go, uh, Zephyr, say, A2. So you have a, a request here or a question. And then I just say, I want it in that, at that level. And then one, all you see right now is, here's your prompt. And here is the story. If you want to use it, you can. You would just take it, copy it, and paste it into uh, maybe a, uh, a Moodle assignment, for example, or an Avenue assignment, but it's all up to you. Okay, so that's the basics. So when we're talking about the attributes, you to get a better result, you want to talk about, you want to give the uh, ChatGPT as much, uh, as much information as possible to make the result better for you and better for your students. So for, for example, you can put context as in this example, um, you're gonna put a, you're gonna provide a setting, environment, or background information. So this prompt says, I need at least six conversation prompts for an English language learning speaking activity at the Sefer B2 level. The conversation should be about becoming a healthcare professional. So healthcare professional, basically it gives some context to the conversation prompts. And if you look on those videos, you will see this prompt with the result. Okay, we don't have time today. You can add tone or style to your prompts. So do you see in the parentheses there, we have humorous tone. So you can say, I, humorous tone, I need an icebreaker for the first class of an English for specific purposes course for healthcare professionals. So it would come back and it would give you a different tone. There's, there's different ways of doing this, but uh, and we'll see a little later, there's an easier way to do this, but you can type that in there if you wish. So tone and style. Keywords are kind of, kind of important when you're doing really specific assignments, especially if you're working with English uh, for specific purposes. You can insert keywords in the parentheses so that uh, you can ensure that they will be part of the vocabulary that they use. So for example, here the prompt is, I'm planning a field trip to Montreal next month, and I'm wondering about the best places to visit. And then museums, sports, and theater will be mentioned within this um, uh, response. Okay. Desired outcomes. You can do, you can add these, and you can add all of these at once. You can add them in any different configuration you want. So for desired outcomes, uh, the prompt is, I'm trying to learn Spanish as a new language, and I want to become fluent as quickly as possible. So to become fluent as quickly as possible is the desired outcome. What are some of the effective methods for language learning that can help me reach this goal? So you can put desired outcomes in your prompts. Uh, one of the most important things you can do is put an actor or a role. So for example, in this prompt, as an English language teacher, I'm I'm looking at for new and engaging ways to teach my students. So you've set the you set the role as you are the English language teacher. Okay, these are really good for uh, dialogues as well. Okay, you can you can describe each of the people, uh, the the different people inside of the dialogue. Give a little more information. So when you're um, Making prompts, try to be as uh, specific as possible. So for example, the first prompt here says, tell me about web quests. You might get a, a response that's just long and winding and or really short, who knows? It, it won't give you what you really want. So you would have to make it more specific. And the example is, 
what are web quests in a language learning class and the positive outcomes of using them. Okay, these are quite obvious, right? I uh, use complete sentences. Uh, ChatGPT works better with these, so avoid shorthand or fragments. Don't just say healthcare vocabulary. Uh, say some, uh, prompt something like build a list of 10 healthcare vocabulary terms and you'll get a better result. Uh, avoid complex language. Um, so avoid, you know, the, the plain language movement uh, from a few years ago and probably st still should be in the fore. Uh, avoid complex language. So you would have something long and drawn out that doesn't really add too much to things. So the example here is a long winding prompt and you can keep it succinct by saying, what are the must-see attractions in France, Italy, Spain, Germany, for a class trip? Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Um, another prompt tip, tip, well, we're language teachers, so use correct grammar and spelling is probably aimed at a different audience. So make sure that you have correct spelling and grammar and punctuation. Uh, going back to the parentheses or brackets, uh, they, they both do the same thing. They, they can be add, they can be used to add additional information that doesn't really go, fit in with your prompt. Okay, so for example, the second one, how do I make my payment online? And in the brackets, it says, I'm trying to pay my utility bill. So you give it a bit more context like that. So you can you can actually mix and match these things um, any way you like and get your style. But as we're going to see in a little bit, there are now, compared to about a month ago, more and more um, prompt templates that we'll be looking at. So it'll be a bit easier than just making your own up in your head. But they're not that hard to make up. Try different approaches if you're not getting uh, the right answer or a, an appropriate answer for your purposes. So you can have a direct question, what is the capital of France? A yes, no question, is Paris the capital of France? A statement, I'm interested in learning more about the French culture. So you can try different approaches and see what the, what the chat GPT comes back at you with. Okay. And my favorite thing to do with uh, prompts when I'm I'm working, especially now I'm working on uh, writing some uh, rated readers, is rewrite. So you can use the command rewrite, and it will just automatically look to the previous uh, output or response, and it will action that. So, for example, in he on this one here, this example here. The, the original prompt was list the best restaurants in San Francisco. And then to save time, I just, I got a response, but I, I, I wanted to see the same thing for Toronto. So I typed in rewrite for Toronto. I should have said rewrite this prompt for Toronto, but it will look backwards and it will action that or act on that and give you a fresh response. Okay. Uh, I, another thing you can do I'm just about done. I'll be one second. One second. See there, Natasha. Um, one thing you can do is if you don't like the response and you think you could be lucky, you could just hit on generate response and it will it will actually give you a, a fresh response as well. Natasha, you have a question? I see your hand up, Natasha. Yeah, sorry, John. Uh, sorry to interrupt, but I'm just wondering, um, are there versions of chat GPT that are free um, so that, you know, perhaps we could make it a little bit more interactive and we could try some of these prompts and that way this information sticks a little bit more. Like while so, we're attending this webinar, then we can also try it. There's no, okay, there's reality and there's reality, right? We might have a second um, opportunity to have another one of these where we, where we, um, we do these. I did this with uh, Tutela, I think two weeks ago, and we went through 12 prompts and there, even then there wasn't enough time. 
to to go through them. That's okay. why I gave you I gave you the handout on the videos. These these aren't really that that tough, right? You just walk. You can just walk through and try them out. Um, because honestly, if you ran a two hour webinar, nobody will show up, right? Sure. And and that's why we we uh, archive these so you can have the video and the handout. And also, uh, what was my last thing? My um, it is free. ChatGPT is free. Okay, right. I think a basic version is free, right? But then anything more you have to. No, it, it's the full version. But if you want to go to version four, the, the latest, latest version, which essentially is really the same, um, it will cost you $30 Canadian a month. Okay. Okay. Um, got it. Okay. On, on, uh, we're working on the Moodle 4 server for the Avenue project. And I've actually got, you know, those little blocks on the right hand side of Moodle? They, we, in our experimental one, we have a chat GPT right there. So you can ask the questions there. But after you, after you see what we're doing here, you just, just sign up for free. It's, it's, it's the same thing, really. You, you know what I mean? Like, like I was a kid, we never, didn't have a lot of money. So I, I was, always got the everything a year late, right? When bell bottoms came out, I was a year late with them, you know, all that kind of stuff. So you know, uh, you you can use it, and uh, Chat GPT three point five is 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 excellent. Um, and also now we're going to talk about in a bit. Everything is uh, interlaced, actually, pretty well. Everything is going to be um, having uh, Chat GPT uh, within it through the API. But we'll talk about that in a sec. Okay, it's a good okay, question. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so use rewrite a lot, and it really will help you. So if you've got uh, up here, we have the, the prompt is uh, list the best restaurants in San Francisco. And the response is Gary Danko, Saison, and Zuni Cafe. Then you can just say, well, rewrite that as a story. So just from one of the best restaurants. And then if you type in rewrite as a story, it actually starts building a story. Oh, no, sorry, they're they're doing this one from the uh, Toronto ca um, cafes. So it was Jane's first trip to Toronto and she was eager to explore the city's vibrant food scene. So essentially uh, you can piggyback all sorts of things and your creativity is only in how you learn how to prompt and how you how you prompt uh, ChatGPT to go in all sorts of different crazy directions. The super cool thing about it is you have to have an account because what it does is it saves all of your interactions on the left-hand side in this tall, long menu. So, and you can clear it out anytime you want. So you can go back three or four days or a week or two from now, and you can still have all of your um, uh, prompts and responses. Then you can also say another rewrite would be, this is my favorite. If I've, if I've done something at a set for say A2 level, and I want to, push it up to a higher level, I could say rewrite at a Sefer B2 level. So you get the same content, but it's written in a, to a different uh, client, I guess, or student. Another thing too, is it does a few format issue things. So like tables are like, if you're gonna do rubrics or something like that, or information, you can say format that information as a table. And we're still talking about the restaurants, right? So the city's Toronto, the restaurant name is here, and then it puts up a description for you for the for the uh, restaurant, but it's now in table format, and you can copy that and paste that into your Word document. Okay, so I'll pause right here, and it's um, if you would like to ask a question, can you raise your hand? Because we're going to go into um, prompts for these five different targets, dialogues, discussions, reading, vocabulary, and rubrics. There is a great question, John, if I may, from the chat, uh, wondering about referencing chat GPT if you create text with it. From my understanding, it's your property, right? The responses you get? Oh, well, I would say, yeah and no. I'm not a lawyer. I've, I've never I've been to court. Uh, I would say that uh, 
this is something that will be worked out over the next year or two. Um, but I would say, yeah, it's kind of like you're you're doing everything, but you might want to put a little asterisk on something, um, especially if you make a blog post directly with this and then just push it out because you know Google's got a bit of a war thing going on, and they will if they identify that you've push something up online that is directly taken from chat, chat GPT. They won't um, link it. They won't, they won't do their magic with it and they'll flag it. So uh, beware of that. Um, there are, there's actually a brand new toy out there that you can grab your tech, students can grab, I'm gonna say students, because we wouldn't do this, but you can get something from chat GPT, like an essay. <laughs> then you can put it into this, Nice little widget, and it will change all sorts of keywords for you. It will change tenses for you and all that stuff. And it mixes it all up so that these chat GPT um, uh, detectors may not be able to find it. So there's another thing that our students probably already know. Sorry, Paul, that's not a great answer, is it? Oh, that, that was a great answer. Thank you, John. <laughs> Appreciate that. Avesna, thank you for that. Um, if you really want to know the the alignment between CLB and Cepher, all you have to do is just ask ChatGPT and it prints out a nice table for you. And then for every level in Cepher and every level in C CLB, you can actually ask it discrete items and then uh, I use those to help yourself out. I do have a resource here, my friends. I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but it's uh, Extensive Reading Central for the... I've been working with Extensive Reading for a while. And uh, this is uh, Paul Waring's site. He's a, he's a kind of a god with Extensive Reading. And he's got all sorts of things on his site, but he's got this one called the Online Rated Text Editor. And what you can do is you can generate some content, um, say for Sefer, and say if it's if your target is B2, right? So if you have Sefer B2, which would be a good um, uh, alignment with uh, CLB5 and maybe six, you can you can take it from ChatGPT and paste it here, and then um, hit go, and it will tell you how close it is in terms of vocabulary and generally mostly vocabulary but basically it's a way of uh, testing this out so the resource is called English extensive reading central and the url is e i'll put it in the uh, chat box to save time it's a really nice uh it's a nice thing to have we need a bunch more uh, more tools like this but i think chat gpt will take care of that okay i think i'm gonna uh move forward folks is that okay? Everybody says seems to be okay. Okay, so ChatGPT, uh, oops, learning materials, examples for things that you would do as a as a as a, an avenue uh, instructor. So for dialogues, you um, you can write have a prompt for dialogues, and in this one here, I have write a dialogue with two people, Aisha and Rafa, who are discussing their latest bus journey to downtown. I say Sefer A2 and only six exchanges in the brackets. Now, you see here, you have a copy of this. This hyperlink takes you to the video of this one, but I'll just show you. Oh, I can't do that on there, can I? Yeah, hang on a second, folks. Yeah, sorry, I set this one up to, we don't have a lot of time, which is a, a drag, but I thought I'd get as much information out to you guys as possible. So if I go to ChatGPT, I can put this prompt in, the exact same prompt I was just showing you, write a dialogue with two people. And when I click on the ChatGPT, send submit button. Uh oh, sorry, I've been off too long. I'm just refreshing the browser, folks. And here we go. 
So here you can see there's my prompt. And here is the dialogue. So I can change the, uh, I can have it rewritten for A2 or 10 exchanges or four exchanges. But you see what kind of a, I guess a materials developer, and I, I recognize a fair amount of you out there. This is kind of a, a mini miracle that's just happened with us. Okay, so that's that. The next one is a discussion. You can create a, dis a discussion starters, right? So list 10 discussion starters for learners about getting a good job. Now with this one here, I think you would be probably doing this. Um, let's just go here. I'll put this in here and same prompt, discussion starters, here they come. And if I don't really like that, right, I can just say regenerate response. And it gives you 10 more. They might be kind of similar, right? And then you think, you know what? I want to start off with one of these, but I need to have more information. So, so I could say expand, um, let's see, number, I'll just guess, number seven. Sorry, I can't spell. And here, so it gives you more information about this item here. And you sort of, you can drill in to uh, a specific point and you can drill, drill, drill down and get more and more information. You could ask it for a video that's related to that, any artic academic articles, uh, government statistics, all that. Okay, so you can keep on going down, right, by saying expand. Okay, I don't want to get caught here. Okay, so you can set up readings. This is brilliant, brilliant, but you as the experts on the CLBs will have to have these vetted carefully before you publish them outside of your classroom, of course, but inside of your classroom, you have control. So write a short news article on the trend of using solar energy for office buildings. Canadian language benchmark four, and it pushes it out. And then from that, so we have the reading. Don't focus on the CLB4 aspect right now because you're probably looking at that saying, oh, maybe it's not. However, you can take that reading and then just go directly to create a vocabulary list with definitions for each term. And that will just look to the previous result and it gives you a vocabulary list. Now, I know if you've made uh, courses for Moodle before uh, or PBLA modules, vocabulary is quite important. And it's great to have the text done. You can massage it a bit and then just pop it into the widgets on HYP or Moodle or Hot Potatoes. So you have the reading, the vocabulary. And then you think, you know what? I want them to have a fill in the blanks with the vocabulary so that um, they, they can internalize it and practice a little bit with the vocabulary. Maybe I'll put it in HYP, I don't know. So then you type in create a fill in the blanks quiz and it generates that. Then after that, you think, you know what? I need, they need more practice with the content here. So I'm going to make a full quiz. So create a quiz with two fill in the blanks, two true and false, true or false, four matching, two open-ended, and two multiple choice questions at CLB4. So I put that in and I get the result. And then I thought, oh, shoot, I'm a teacher. I don't want to learn all this. So I need an answer key. I got that from The Simpsons a long time ago. So I want an answer key or Mr. D. And anyway, so you can type in, write the answer key, and it will give you an answer key. Okay, so that is, uh, that's a whole series of things you can do all in a row, right? Not, not a lot of effort, just a little bit of finger effort. Maybe you might need to, I don't know, put, I guess you can't put talcum powder on your fingers anymore. Anyway, just be nice to your fingers and type. And then a lot of uh, what, what I've learned from using this over the last six weeks or so to make graded readers is that I don't really like want it to write it, write the graded readers for me. I just want them to give me an outline. So one of them, uh, the stories is, is a family from the Punjab, uh, and they see that on Hockey Night in Canada is trans is broadcast in Punjabi. And the, the children hear about hockey at school and they want to get involved. And we've written, I've written a graded reader from an outline that I negotiated with ChatGPT. So I filled it all out but I, I took the outline from 
ideas that came from my story concept uh, from ChatGPT. So you can have an outline. You can also do an outline of a course, an outline of a lesson. So you just write an outline of a short news article and maybe have your students assemble, take that outline and, and write their own article. There's many things you can do with that. So Sefer, um, I use Sefer because it's more dependable, if I'm finding, than using the CLBs. But I think it's CLBs are getting used more, so it's getting uh, more in tune with it. Uh, so anyway, you can change your, you can, you can use the IELTS, you can use any scale you want. Um, a lot of people, if you see examples online, they'll say, write an article about solar panels as if you are writing it for a grade five student. Okay, so you can, you can scale it that way if, if you wish. Uh, one thing that we all do for our assignments for our students a lot is uh, set up a writing task. So this one says, write a description for writing a writing activity that asks learners to write a short news article on the trend of using solar energy, energy for our office buildings and you specify the uh, Sephir level. So there it is, it generates it, and then you as a teacher or the expert will uh, massage it and then possibly put it up on Moodle. So for that same writing task, if you look here, you've got the task, but then maybe you can get a rubric um, derived by, and built by uh, ChatGPT. So you can say, it, it's, it has made the writing task. You can say, create a rubric for this task, set four criteria using scale, the scales excellent, satisfactory, good, poor. And then I put in the parentheses table format. So you get a result. And then you, of course, massage it. Then you can also just generate a rubric from scratch. So this one has nothing to do with any, any assignment you have here. You uh, you can uh, just specify the rubric's um, details, and then it will just generate a rubric, maybe for an assignment or task that you have already done and you want to add a rubric to that. Uh, there, here's a, a prompt that I think you should know. Uh, TL semicolon DR. It really means too long, didn't read. So for example, if I, oh shoot, I didn't, did I save this one? I didn't save this one. So I saw a, an article um, last night and I wanted to, to look at it, but it was about 20 plus pages. And so what I did was I just typed in this and the web address of the, of the document and it came up and it gave me feedback. So it summarized the article. There are much better tools than this. I'm just showing you the, the, the possibility here with ChatGPT. Okay. So all of the uh, things we just showed, I just showed you, these hyperlinks are on that PDF I sent you a little bit ago. So you can go there and see the videos if you want. Like I said, after one or two, you're going to say, yeah, okay, I get it. Uh, there are chat. GPT detection tools, there's lots of them out there. Here are three examples. And if you want to examine them, you can click on these, um, put a sample of your own writing and a sample that came from ChatGPT and see the result, okay? So end to end on Avenue, you start with a concept. So for example, you want a CLB4 activity, understanding oh, that, is a reading task for understanding instructions. So then you have to come up with a prompt. In this case, it's write an email apologizing to an interviewer for missing an online data entry clerk job interview at the CLB4 level. So there's your prompt. And then it comes up with it. You change things around. And then you would put them in an editor. And the main editor I think we have right now is uh, Microsoft Word. And something that's quite important before you pop it into H5P or Moodle or whatever editor you use is this little beauty right here. Okay, if you click on that, the clear formatting 
icon. You select all of this and click on that icon. It will take all sorts of stuff out of that. So when you do put it into Moodle, H5P or what hotpot, um, there will be no uh, strange, crazy formatting issues or things happening. So remember, remember to the clear all formatting icon. Okay, and then you're going to edit them inside of Moodle, as you see here, or H5P. So uh, one of the things that's uh, really catching on fire now with this uh, wave of uh, the ChatGPT wave are uh, add-ons and extensions. Okay, so the first one is ChatGPT for search engines. It basically works with your search engine and you get the, well, you'll see, it works with the search engine such as Google and also it arrives with like 80 plus prompt templates. You know how I've talked to you about prompts? Well, there are templates out there that you can use to make your prompt prompting more effective and save you a lot of time. Hmm. There's something called ChatGPT Writer. And what that does is, well, basically, I'm just going to talk about responding to Gmails. So you can actually make a Gmail, an original mail, but generally it's used to reply, help you reply to emails. And there's Prompt Theus. And so what that does is it allows you to hold down the space bar and speak to ChatGPT instead of typing. But at the, this very moment, I was uh, reading up today and the author of this uh, technology said one of the most recent ChatGPT uh, upgrades has prevented it from working, but he'll get it working. So that's something to keep on your radar. Then there's a YouTube summary with ChatGPT. So say if there's a long video and you want to summarize it, um, you can just use this add-on and it will give you the full script if you wish and or summarize the video. For long lectures, uh, my God, can you imagine if you were going to university now and you had recorded lectures, like at some universities that are two, uh, 45 minutes, 90 minutes, two hours long, and then this you'd have this available to you? Boy, lucky stuff. And then there's the uh, Web Chat GPT extension. And the Web Chat GPT extension allows you to let Chat GPT look at the web. So essentially it's, and I hope you know that uh, ChatGPT can't really look be after 2021 for information. So this allows you to see more current information and act on that. Well, I see there's a bunch of activity. Should I stop and answer or are you guys flying along? I think things are okay in the chat. Thank you, John. Great session. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so I'm, I'm sure most of you or all of you know how to uh, acquire extensions or add-ons, depending on your browser of preference. So um, you basically just go to the hamburger menu on the far right of your browser, and then add-ons and themes, or more tools and extensions. So it's quite simple, right? I hope. So here's our first um, extension or add-on. It's ChatGPT for search engines. Let me just reset this. Okay, so I've got mine all set up here. So normally this should just all, this shouldn't be here and this shouldn't be here as well. So this is the icon here. So to get this to work for you, you click on this the first time. Okay, chat GPT or search engines. And then in here, you have to go to the settings icon. And they have something called trigger mode. So you can have, every time you do a, a Google search, it will pop, it will open uh, chat GPT and give more information and allow you to prompt. If you don't want that happening all the time, you can use the question mark option, which means you 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 type into to Google with a question mark, and then it will activate. Or man, you can set it up manually where you just click on the icon every time. I find that a bit of a pain, so I set always to be on. And I'm going to click on save here. Now this should be active. And when I've done that, it also added a whole 
bunch of uh, ChatGPT prompt templates. Let me see here. Okay, oh, I better, I better take a step backwards here. So here's my Google, and I'm hoping I'm going to hit refresh, and I'm hoping this is going to work. I don't want storage for the moment. I have the Toronto Maple Leafs. Excuse me. Not won a Stanley Cup in 50 years. Oh, that's good. So you'll see here, I've asked the question to Google, why have the Toronto Maple Leafs not won a Stanley Cup in 50 years? And they, they have their, their re basic responses from all their websites. But if over, over here you look, because I've activated this, um, ChatGPT is here and it's giving me the answers. It should be quite a long answer because it's been a long time since they've won a Stanley Cup. So as you can see, it's given a lot of answers here. And we'll just, we'll wait here. So yeah, so th these are the steps for when we uh, we come back here. When you come back later, look at this. Oh my God, this is a terrible question to ask. Ah, I hope they mentioned Ken Dryden when he was a president. I think he was a big problem too. Why would you hire a Montreal Canadian? to save the Toronto Maple Leafs. I just, just don't know. Oh, okay. So you see that here's the explanation, quite nice. But also you can, you also have the prompt. I don't know, I, I can put a prompt in here and go. So you have ChatGPT with your Google functionality. But when you've done that, these templates appear also. Okay, so here, if I just turn this on, I get these prompt templates. So for example, I'm a blogger. If you're a blogger, this might help you. So you might, uh, oh, geez, look at this. I wanna, this is a, a, a prompt template. So you can go here, write a blog intro for a post about, um, I don't know, dog grooming. Okay, the title of your dog post is uh, NASA, uh, Big Dogs. And then you can write a brief description. Big dogs are trouble or dog groomers. You can put keywords here, number of words. I'll say like uh, 350 target audience professional dog groomers. Okay, so dog. Oh, sorry. Dog shampoo. Attitude. Okay. So I've got that there and I can put style of tone. I can put uh, friendly, luxury, da, 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 empathetic, uh, witty, I'll put witty. Language would be English by default. And then, if, so you see, you've, you've just filled out a form, it's starting to feel like H5P now, right? Click on send message. And here's my short little blog post. But if you push this out, it, you'll get caught sooner or later. So I don't know change it to something else. Any, anyway, but I'm not saying you should use that. Okay, so that's one way you, you can use templates brought on by GPT for search engines. So you can add that on in a few seconds on your computer and you have all that functionality. So if you come back to this PowerPoint for instructions, there they are. Uh, it works on Chrome, DuckDuckGo, Brave, Edge, Firefox, and more. So there's another feature, another add-on called Web Chat GPT. This is the icon. And what it does is if you, it, it allows the um, Chat GPT to read the internet now and get information and bring it back into its response for you. 
So up until a little while ago, you could only see up into 2021, but now you can see up till now. And uh, let's go back here. And this, when you activate this, it comes down here. So you go web access. Okay, so uh, something that's current, uh, who won best actor for the Academy Awards? in 2023. And it's generating a response. So it shows you the web results here, and then it gives you the chat GP. So also it tells you where it, the, the information came from, a, su a short summary, and then here. You can also, uh, drill down by clicking on reference numbers like this, and it will take you to the places. Okay, so you can actually use this feature. You can and you can expand it to show four results um, from Argentina. You know, over the past year, or whatever. So you have a lot more options here. So that is that is uh, ChatGPT Web Chat GPT. And here's ChatGPT Writer. I, I don't have time, so I'll just walk through the slides. This one is cool. I've got it here. And it writes emails or replies to emails. So what you do is you open the email app, like Gmail. You can do this, like, uh, where's my Gmail? Here's my Gmail. I got an email here. Oh, look at that. A Walmart job opportunity from John Allen. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. So normally, I would just click on one of these or whatever. I got to hit reply. And as you can see, I've activated this uh, chat GPT writer. So I can click on here. Here's my context. And um, um, right, an acceptance email. So I'm going to generate a reply. And it generates my uh, reply here. And as you can see, I'm not typing anything. There's nothing, I'm not, there's no trickery here. It's doing it for me. So I could actually go out and, and read the paper or take the dog for a walk and come back to my, my reply. Anyway, it's, it's doing this. So essentially what you do is you, uh, you click on generate response, that's where we were. Um, and uh, after it's, okay, sorry, there, there we're caught up now, generate reply, and then you click on the insert generated response button, and then it goes to your Gmail account, and then you, you got to make sure that everything's perfect before you send it, click on send, and it's off and gone, so you can do it that way, or you can do it this way, you can just use it like this, you can click on it, oh, Sorry, it's not working on this one right now, but you can, when things are, the stars are aligned, you can click on it and just start writing an original email, like a, uh, you can start the first email, but I've only been using it so far for replying. Okay, so the final um, extension or add-on we have. So the YouTube uh, summary with Chat ChatGPT is the name of the extension. And what happens here is you open up YouTube and it's right here. It just sits right there and you can um, get the transcript. What's my YouTube? Okay, so if I click here, you see I've, I've set up this extension. A lot of times with uh, tasks such as writing. And that's um, me. That's my video. So I want to get a transcript here. There's my transcript. But I don't really want the transcript. I want the summary. So what it does, I click on the summary button. There's my transcript and here, here it summarizes here. Here, these links are available to you if you want to use them from that document. And I'll take any questions now, Paul. John, I just want to thank you for sending the material before. It makes it much easier to understand. You Cheers. know, I before and then it's easier because this is all 
a lot of information. Is it, it is. I apologize for that, but, but because there's, you said there's even more. There's even more uh, coming. Well, because you sent it before, it makes it easier. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Susanna.